say that part of it from a mental hurdle standpoint was behind you? Like when I'm um, sure you're at the point where you don't think about it now, but when when did you finally get over the hump? Man, I think when Coach Beck called me, um, he was the first Power Five you know school to call me and kind of you know, express his interest. And after that, um, it was a sign of relief just because I knew that I was heading in the right direction and that my gameplay was, you know, you know, turning heads and this potentially would set me up to be uh, back at the highest level. So once once Coach Beck called me and expressed his interest, that's when I knew that I said, okay, I can relax now, um, still play, but I don't have to have all this, you know, thoughts racing and getting on social media trying to check you know if a coach following me you know after a game trying to see if i done good enough or you know if i had to do more if i should have done more thinking about this play and that play talking thinking about who was out there watching and after that that allowed me to play better um you know and allow me to uh, just play freely and have more fun with it what you know about virginia when he reached out uh nothing <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, but um, yeah, your I didn't brother had played against them. Yeah, my, I knew my brother played against them, and I knew the helmets when they played them were cool. So that's one thing. <laughs> Another thing is, uh, I knew I knew Tiki Tiki and Ronnie Barber came here. I knew that before because I read a book about them when I was a kid. There's a picture, but. And then three, <laughs> and then three uh, another quarterback from Arizona went to Virginia, and I knew that, uh, Connor Brewer. And, and so I trained with him on his transition from, I think, NAU to Virginia. And he was kind of telling me about it. So not a, not a lot of in-depth, but, uh, you know, at least three things. Coach, what, uh, what questions do you have then? I mean. Oh, man. Um, man, uh, the, the type of – well, because coach took, kind of called me in, and they were transitioning. I knew they were at BYU, so the offensive, uh, you know, scheme we kind of you know more in depth when I got here. Um, the environment and being from Arizona, kind of all coming to Virginia, you know, you know we don't see a lot of green where I'm from, and there's a lot. And then the weather was definitely you know questions I had. And I definitely researched, my, me and my parents researched this, you know, just about in everything, just the environment, the school itself, being kind of a more historic, you know, school than I've come from. Just, you know, how everything was, you know, brought to be. And when we got here on, on our visit, um, one of the um, you know, recruiting guys, Bob, took us around and kind of showed us, like, landmarks in, in the school itself, which was pretty cool. So. The uh, Broncos are already talking about the Virginia Tech game. Well, I asked him about the Virginia Tech game. What do, what do you think about the emphasis that's placed on the game and how important is it going to be for you this year? Oh, uh, man. Um, the emphasis is, is, is extreme. I mean, I think more so than last year for me personally because, you know, I didn't have really had any experience with Virginia Tech until that game. And then now, you know, after a year, you know, and after losing – and after losing how we lost, um, you know, it, it definitely, it still stings a little bit. I mean, and even last year, it took me a while to get over that, you know, even at school. And and I'm not completely over it when we talk about it. You know, I still get, you know, the, that little pit in my stomach. And then it looked like you were on a path to score the winning touchdown there. Yeah, and that's what, you know, as a player and as a competitor, um, you know, it, it, it may not always be like this, but... When that happened, I looked at myself like I lost the game for the team, which, you know, is the last play that lost the game. And I really took it to heart because um, it was like, man, it don't matter what you did leading up to that point, the last play, if it was on you, and then just replaying all the things that could have, could have went. There a hole there, thing. wasn't there? Yeah, all the things that could have, so could have happened, just, you know, just replaying it, and it's making me sick. you got to be crazy mentally strong to get past that. Yeah, I mean, and I was, like, like I said, I mean, it took a while. I mean. But then look what you did in the belt ball. Yeah. Cause so it didn't take that long. So it, it turned it like, you know, the five stages of grief. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so like, you know, after, uh, you know, I was you know, in denial, I was angry, yeah. you know, I was sad. Um, and after that, you know, leading up to the game, you know, 
it, it was the anger that kind of, you know, made me want to get back out there mm-hmm. and just, you know, just whatever happened, just leave everything else, you know, mm-hmm. in behind and just focus on that game, which I think we all did that. And that's yeah. what allowed us to, you know, go out there and win in the fashion that we did. So now transitioning to this year, and we had to keep that same anger, but apply it to every game and not wait for a loss for it to be reenacted again. So would would you? Um, the, the play. I mean, I don't know if you've ever talked. What, what happened there? I guess we can say it was a heartbeat. Yeah. What, what, can you even do the remember? Was it blur? Like, oh yeah, I remember everything. Like, Just what, what happened? Like, how did it? Like, how did that uh, so I mean, it was a um, the RPO. Um, run pass, tight end in the flat. Um, so you know, read, read the defender. So um, we were in pistol. Uh, I didn't jump back far enough to pull it. So when I kind of, I kind of stayed on the running back's track. So when I jumped back, and then I tried to pull it, I was too close to the running back. So I hit him, and then while I was trying to pull and throw, and the ball came out, and then. Uh, I try to reach for it, then I got hit, and it's a big guy. That's how she wrote. What, what do you make of the expectations for this year? They're, they're the highest they've been in over a decade. And do you embrace that? And what makes you believe that you can build on last year's success? Well, I mean, it doesn't matter anybody else's expectation because they're not higher than ours. I mean, we really look at every game and just say, like, why not? Like, why, why, why should we lose this game? You know, are they that much? You know, so. Um, our expectations for ourselves is great is, is greater than you know a lot of outside expectations and and they may match it um, and I think as a player and as a team you know when you expect more of yourself than other people then that's when you start performing the best so I mean and, and I take that to heart too um, I'm the, my biggest critic and um, that's going to allow us to train and practice the way we need to practice. If we truly believe that, you know, we're the best team in the Coastal and we truly believe that we can win the ACC championship, then we're going to attack every day and practice in summer workouts um, like we deserve, you know, you know, and we need and we have to win the Coastal. So, I mean, this, so this summer has been intense as far as everybody trying to uh, get bigger, uh, faster and stronger. And then we're going to see when camp rolls around uh, uh, how many guys you know are on the board of winning this championship. What's the running back situation look like? You lose in a thousand yard rusher. You you said that was your goal last year to get him a thousand. Mm-hmm. Who's what's your goal for those running backs this year? Man, I mean during spring it's hard to say because everybody and I I really mean everybody you know shows flashes of. Oh wow! Maybe, maybe this guy's a running back. Oh, true. Maybe he's a starter. Maybe he's a starter. And between all the guys, you know, L.A. Sharp, you know, Wayne and P.K., um, you know, we got to see um, coming in. I mean, I'm impressed with Wayne just because he's he's a younger guy and 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 kind of how he handled the you know the the transition the the competition level. I mean, he's doing a great job. I mean, P.K. coming back, you know, one of the strongest guys. He kind of reminds you of, you know, Jordan as far as how, how strong he is and how, you know, how his running style is. So, um, this A lot of spring, people, though. Yeah, there's a lot of guys, and, and, and that's a good problem to have. You know, also from the outside looking in, you know, within the room, you know, they're so competitive that, you know, someone's going to get, you know, slided and someone's going to feel slided a little bit. But, so, I mean, it's going to come down to this fall camp. Whoever has the best uh, fall camp is going to play week one. And we may play multiple running backs. Uh, last year, J.E. was the clear cut starter, so you know he got most of the carries. But if everybody's doing their job and performing at a high level, then you know I don't see no reason why you know multiple guys get fresh legs in you know during the game. So about receiver, uh, with with Ilam- you and Alamity had a great rapport last year on the field. It mm-hmm. seemed like uh, with him with him not there, who do you think kind of steps up to kind of replace that production? Uh, I mean, a lot of the, yeah, I mean, he was so easy to work with just as far as, you know, I knew where he was going to be. And, you know, this year, um, kind of, you know, his skill set is kind of irreplaceable just as far as you know, how smart, how fast, how strong he was on the field. Um, but I've been working with, you know, you know, a lot of the guys, you know, about four guys every day just to get, you know, clear, you know, chemistry down. And, 
Um, I don't know who's gonna get majority of the load, but you know, you know, this team is pushing for, you know, Joe Reed to emerge as, you know, that slot presence that has O was and kind of step up him and TK, Tavares Kelly, which is another great player, to step up and kind of, you know, take the uh, similar routes and similar plays that he had and kind of, um, you know, put it on them. And both of the guys bring different things. You know, TK is fast. I mean, his angles are strong. I don't know how he cuts on a dime like how he does. I mean, he has to. Something's, something's wrong with his ankles. It's got to be. <laughs> and then Joe Reed is just strong, athletic, and fast, and you can't tackle him. So um, both those guys at the slot position is going to do a lot of for us this year. Who's the fastest guy between the three of you? Me, TK, Joe Reed. So I don't lie. You asked me this last year. You know, I may have said, you know, me. <laughs> but, you know, my pride is, uh, is washed, you know, I mean, TK, TK definitely, had, definitely has a different level of speed that I have seen, so well, I'll give it to him. Manny Diaz was He said last season was Miami was preparing to play you guys. And what impressed him for all your physical skills was your sense of call during the play, between plays, when pressure, and so How has... How have you de developed that on-field demeanor where it just looks like you're unfazed, no matter the pressure? Um, it comes from my, my high school coach, uh, my quarterback coach, Coach Garrison. I mean, regardless of what happened, he was always um, calm on the field. And he always told me, play medium, play medium, play medium. And so after that, it just, you know, you know, it's still in my mind that, okay, regardless of what happens, you know, things go here, things go up, things go down, but if you stay the same, if you stay level-headed, and then you'll be able to handle any situation when it comes. So they always call me the, uh, <laughs> my coach called me the cool Jamaican just because <laughs> I, you know, I had dreads. And, and that's because no matter what, you know, I've always seemed to stay calm and stay level-headed, not too high, not too low. And I think that's when I'm on my best. So trying to translate that to now, I still try to keep that same quality. So you think your teammates feed off that too and notice that and maybe that helps them keep the sense of calm as well? Yeah, I mean different you know, different guys have different personalities. Right. Like, um, I'm very calm on the field to try to be and then, you know, Haas is very, you know, emotional and very energetic, which, you know, works for him. You know, that brings out the best of him. So, you know, regardless of if we're, you know, really energetic or really calm, as long as, you know, the, our mindset's the same, um, it doesn't matter how it gets to it. I mean, but definitely if, I, if they see me down depressed, that definitely, um, you know, the team definitely sees that and definitely, you know, kind of reacts as that. So, um, I, I try to stay calm for the team and whoever else, you know, decides to stay calm or, you know, play really emotional, play really uh, aggressive and, and kind of show like a mm, mad face, you know. Uh, everybody has their own way of, you know, of attacking the game, but the mindset has to be confident regardless. Pitch coach, uh, pitch coach also mentioned your calmness, and he's, does that serve you well when it comes to uh, – all the decision making with the RPOs and everything, just that calmness, that poise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, especially in you know, facing pit. I mean, they bring a lot of guys at you, and and even throughout the year, just a lot of things are moving. You know, guys, you know, especially Miami, big defensive linemen, and just you know, just kind of you know, calming myself, not getting too jittery, and allows me to make the best decisions. So. When you, when people talk about dual threat quarterbacks, you're usually talking about 5'10", 180 pound guys. You're a dual threat quarterback who has everything else says NFL prototype, the height, the weight, the yeah. size, the arm strength. How do you, I mean, thinking about potentially the next level, uh, how, can, how can you showcase yourself perhaps, uh, you know, to show that you have those skills while also doing what you need to do uh, to help this offense run the way it needs to run? Um, my knowledge, uh, I'm going to step away from the physical aspect of it for a second. Just my knowledge of the game and, and making decisions um, is definitely going to you know, allow myself to separate myself from you know, other stereotypes about dual threat quarterbacks or other, you know, other people in, in the conference or even in America. And then just proving that, you know, I can be, my coach always says this, um, you don't want to be an athlete that can pass. You know what I'm saying? You want to be, you want to be a quarterback 
that can make plays with his feet. So I want to be better passer than runner and have the ability to put guys in a, uh, a good position to catch the ball and, you know, make plays for them, you know, opposed to me, you know, trying to take off and, and you know, wearing my body down and, and kind of um, using my legs when I don't have to, but trying to make it smart. So. You talked about letdowns kind of late in the season.